We saw many weapons and shields in the trailer for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Let's take a look at them, see what they might be, and see how they compare to their historical equivalents. First, very early on in the trailer, we see this large two-handed axe. I assume it's supposed to represent some type of Dane axe, though it only resembles a Dane axe in the most basic form, meaning large-headed, two-handed axe. But the head of it is much, much thicker, and it has features that wouldn't be found in a Dane axe, like the kind of fleur de lis like spikes on the top and back. But I guess it's supposed to represent some type of Dane axe. Shortly after that, we see this other axe. It appears to be some type of one handed bearded axe, and it appears very, very thick. And then in the distance, we see and the individual standing in the middle of the shot has a Viking Age sword that at this distance looks pretty good. Can't see in too great detail, but that looks good, that sword does. Though this axe closer up looks rather thick. Shortly later, we see these round shields. They look decent, though iron rims weren't very common on those shields. More often they would have rawhide rims. And often the shields would be faced with either leather, rawhide, or canvas. Something to hold the wood more together. Also we see some type of large bearded axe with thin blade. This looks much more like a form of combat axe. I, I think I've seen axes of that type that existed in the late Viking Age. But I'm not sure if they would have been common very much in the 9th century when this game is supposed to be set. Also, that shaft of it seems very circular and thick. Often, axes like that would have more of an ovular or rectangular shaft. The round can occur. Shortly later in the trailer, we once again get another close look at that one-handed axe. And it is very long and very large-headed and complex-hefted. It, it's more of a fantasy design than a historical axe, and it is very overly large. The knob on the back isn't completely a historical for Viking Age axe. I've seen a few examples of ones that did have a knob or a hammer on the back of the axe head, though those are rare. We then get to see the axe again. It is extremely thick. That axe would be extremely heavy and rather unwieldy. Also, it appears it might have a metal heft, which would make it even heavier and would not be seen down in the Viking Age. So, later, late medieval warhammers and axes did have metal hafts, but they were a lot thinner than that and the heads were not that thick. We also get to see the shields in profile. We see they are extremely thick. Now, there are a few examples of shields that thick, but they are rare, and a shield that thick is extremely heavy. My first Viking Age shield I built was that thick, and it weighs 12 pounds. It is hard to build that thing. Historical Viking shields were much thinner and tapered down towards the edges, as to be easy to wield and be able to change directions and holding it very quickly that was nimble in the hand. Also, we see that these shields appear to be strapped onto their arms, but that's not how you hold a Viking Age shield. Viking Age shields are center gripped. There's a shaft going down the middle that you hold, that your hand goes into where that iron boss is. If you see that boss on the other shield, that your hand should be right behind that, holding on to a wooden or metal grip there. That would be most common. If we go on, Later in the trailer, we see a Viking playing with his kids, teaching them to fight, or his play fighting with them, and we get to see another look at a Viking Age sword, and this looks very good, and the scabbard looks rather good. Overall, I like that sword, and it appears that the pommel and the guard are not overly large, and it appears to be roughly the same size, which is good, and it appears to only have enough room for one hand, how it should. Once again, later in the trailer, we see the shields are for some reason strapped. Viking Age shields are not strapped, they're center gripped. And there's a point for that, it allows for the nimble use. So that is inaccurate. Also, it affects how you could use the shield. 
Shortly after this, we see once again the straps of their arm, and we also get to see that very distinctly bearded axe, to an axe there. So once again, mostly the same weapons here. We get to see a few more weapons shortly later. One that looks like a wood chopping axe, given a beard, right there on the left side of the image. Not something you would have seen at that time. They might have had some wood chopping axes with that type of grip, but not to my knowledge. That looks like a modern wood chopping axe that someone gave a beard onto. That's not a thing. And then we once again see that fantasy one-handed axe again in this shot. If we go on, we finally get to see some Anglo-Saxon weapons. And we get to see kite shields. Kite shields are wonderful, and they did exist during the Viking Age. At the very end of the Viking Age, they are very common. But this is set during the 9th century. The earliest evidence we have about for kite shields is the 10th century. So these are the early. But these are being held right. They should be strapped under the arm. That's how you hold a kite shield. Although there's multiple different ways you can strap them to your arm. The spear looks, I think, looks decent, um, but the sword, one of the individuals with the kite shield is holding, looks rather long for a 9th century sword. It looks more like something you see in the 10th century, in the end of the Viking Age. But I think they probably wanted to differentiate the Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings, so they decided to give the Anglo-Saxons those later sets of gear. If we go a little bit later, we see this individual with this, what appears to be a one-handed maul. Now, a maul is a big two-handed hammer with a wooden head. It's like a giant two-handed wooden mount meant for crushing an armor. Not the most commonly used, but it was occasionally used. But this appears to be an iron or stone-headed one-handed maul. That thing will be ridiculously heavy and unwieldable. That's not how you make a war hammer. Though, Thor's hammer, I can't pronounce it very well, is supposed to be kind of similar appearance to that. Though, in the original myths, his hammer was so heavy that only he could pick it up. It wasn't that he had to be special to pick it up, only he could pick it up because of its weight. They knew you would not want to wield a steel hammer shaped like that. You wouldn't be able to. Going the same shot, we once again see a rather large two-hand axe, which I guess represents a Dane axe, though it doesn't really look like one. It looks like more some oddly distorted wood chopping axe. Going a little bit further, we get to see a great, wonderful, and detailed decorated Viking Age sword. And we look first in this shot, it looks like the guard is a little too wide. But we can see it's not actually that much wider than the pummel later on. And that's just fine. Some did have wider guards. And this one's beautiful. This is a beautiful example of a Viking Age sword. It is wonderful. So I give them props for that. But after this, we have some issues. We have this sword. Now initially when I saw it, I thought it looked most like a 13A type oak shot sword. This would be a 14th century long sword. Only type of long sword. But as you see shortly later, it's hilt and pummel are not of that type. It's guard, hilt, and pummel of a late 14th, early 16th style of long sword. Much later than should ever be here. The, the sword itself, this sword, it looks beautiful. It's a beautiful looking sword. It is hundreds of years out of date. It would be the equivalent uh, well, actually, if we look at this, this guy, Will it kind of looks like a visiting cat, right? It would be equivalent of having a soldier in the British Army in the American Revolution running around wearing an Ottoman outfit while wielding a modern assault rifle. That's how out of date this sword and this and now our place as versus attire is to this era. But the sword does look great. Now if we look again, we also get to see another shot that both these beautifully designed swords, though one's hundreds of years out of date, but both of them do look great. And then last, we have the hidden blade. Now I am glad to see that it's in a position where it's less likely to sever fingers. That is great. We've seen that as a problem. Even before it was acknowledged. 
but sadly I do not know of any historical examples of hidden blades. But maybe you do, so let me know. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe.